Hey, again. You might remember me from such virtual orientation videos as earlier this year. That was fun. Yeah, campus is going to feel a little different this year, starting out at least. But it doesn't mean you won't be able to hurl yourself into this first year at the U with gusto. We're still dedicated to making your time here unforgettable. We're so excited you're here. It's been way too quiet lately. Never thought I'd say that. Anyway, since we can't have you on campus for our new student welcome, we thought we'd stick to the whole virtual theme and bring it to you. So, seriously, this will be nice. You can watch it at your own pace, pause the video to reflect on how awesome this experience is, and get excited to jump into college headfirst on August 24th, to be exact. So, sit back, settle in, grab some munchies. It won't be as long as that other thing you had to go through earlier this year. And if your folks, loved ones, or community are watching with you, I suggest you share said munchies. They're kind of supporting you a ton as you begin this magical new journey. So, it's just a nice thing to do. So let's get started. Hey, I think I just saw President Ruth Watkins go into the campus store. To all of you who are watching this video, welcome to the U. We are thrilled that you're joining us. We wish we could welcome you in person, but I pledge that when we are able to come together, we will have one big celebration to properly welcome you to our campus. None of us could have imagined this unprecedented moment in history. There is no question that because of the coronavirus pandemic, things will be different on our campus this fall. But let me tell you what won't be different. You are at the center of everything we do at the U. We are here for you and we'll do all we can to support you in your academic journey. That remains unchanged. Students come to the U for many reasons. You may want to study a certain subject, develop a special talent, support and give back to your families and communities, solve all kinds of problems, big ones and little ones, Many of you want to create a better world. Let me tell you another thing that has not changed. We are dedicated to helping you achieve all of those things and more. Our faculty and staff will help you pursue your passions and your dreams. You'll have great classes here at the U, guided by world-class faculty and staff. You will make many new friends along the way, and those relationships may develop in ways you have never expected. The associated students of the University of Utah and leaders of the hundreds of student organizations and clubs at the U are working on creative ways for you to come together throughout the semester. I hope you will join us and join in as many of these things as you can. A bit of advice, find a mentor to work with. That will be a key to your success here at the U. Another key, don't hesitate to ask for help or guidance. Our student success advisors, residential advisors, and library staff, they are all here to help you navigate and make the university a little bit smaller and better for you. I love having the opportunity to talk to and personally welcome new students each year as we begin fall semester. So this year, we're doing it a little differently. I'm gonna call a few first year students and you can listen in. Michelle, thank you so much and welcome to the University of Utah. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm just thrilled that you'll be joining us this fall. Oh, me too. I'm third generation University of Utah, so that alone is a pretty strong thing, but also just growing up downtown, everybody wants to go to the U, so it's kind of just where I belong, I guess. I love that. I think it's where you belong too. And so my mom from Honduras and my dad is from Peru. Um, I live with my two little siblings. I take care of them most of the time. And I live with my uncle here in South Jordan. I just graduated from Bingham High School this year. Are there any things you really hope to be able to do outside the classroom? Other activities you'd like to be involved in? I want to meet new people, maybe join any clubs. You know, I'm not really sure. I really would like to volunteer. I'd like to get out there as much as I can and involve myself as much as I can, so. We're so lucky that you chose us. 
I've been delighted to meet you in person as soon as it's safe to do so. Thank you so much. All right, take care. We'll look forward to seeing you on campus soon. Of course, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Bye, Tanner, I appreciate it. We'll see you on campus. Well, Zach, it is a pleasure to get to visit with you for a minute. One of my favorite things about the beginning of a school year is saying welcome back to returning students. Thank you, I appreciate it. I understand you're from Las Vegas, but now you're a Salt Lake City person. Yep, so I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada until I came out here for school. Tell me what you're excited about for the year ahead. I'm really excited to get to see um, all the people that I missed during the time that we've been gone. I know it's been, what now, since March that we've been off campus. Um, so that's been a little bit sad, but I'm also really excited to get to continue going and taking classes because I did take the summer off and I'm just like fresh and ready to go and keep learning and um, being part of our community. Well, you've done a wonderful job of being involved in creating a community on campus. I'm going into my junior year. I'm double majoring in political science and international studies, and I'm double minoring in applied ethics and environmental sustainability. Wow, you're taking advantage of everything the U has to offer in one yeah. degree. You know, I had a lot of good academic advisors that really helped me lay out my classes, so I was able to do all of that, so. You know, that's a fabulous tip. Use your academic advisor. Absolutely. Absolutely, they helped me lay out all my classes so that I could see which classes would overlap and count for both majors or something like that. So it's been really awesome. I have to say, Zach, I'm so proud that you're a University of Utah student. It's gonna be fun to watch what you accomplish in your career. Thank you, I appreciate it. You are using your voice to uh, really share the value of higher ed and build community at the U. So thank you for everything you do and so glad you're coming back. Uh, so until we can see each other in person, I'll say, go Utah. Go Utah. Go Utah. <laughs> Our goal for you is simple. We want you to have an exceptional educational experience, an experience that prepares you to think creatively, solve big problems, thrive in a dynamic, interconnected world. Another thing that is unchanged. You are attending one of America's leading research universities, and that means you will have unique opportunities to, during your time here to engage in projects and research with leading scholars. Maybe you'll work on a project, like Adobe founder John Warnock did, that leads to the creation of the next big thing in technology. Perhaps you'll hone your writing skills here, as did Tracy McMillan with a degree in journalism, now an author and TV writer for such shows as Mad Men and Runaways, a Marvel Comics-based show. Or, for all of you who have been playing Animal Crossing for the past four months, maybe like Doug Bowser, CEO of Nintendo, you'll develop leadership and communication skills that will take you to the top of a company or an organization. Your opportunities here are as wide open as your imagination. All of us are deeply committed to your success. Our goal is that each of you will graduate with a degree, whether it's the one you came here to pursue or one you discover along the way. You're part of a special group, one connected by a shared experience and a moment in history. You are also part of the U family now. With that in mind, I have one request of you. Our world is in the midst of major change. We don't know how this year will unfold from global health to social and racial justice. Let's commit to treating one another with kindness and respect, to keeping each other's best interest in minds, and to acting for the good of our campus community. We are in this together, and together we will make this a great year. And one last thing, go Utah. Wow, President Watkins really loves the students here at the U. We're lucky to have her as our president. And we have some pretty amazing students here, but I'm not surprised. We are the University of Utah, we are one you. Speaking of awesome, Dan Reed, our Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs, is pretty awesome. And we were lucky to get a message from him without a tie on and on the top of the U's observatory. You know, I grew up in the little town in the Ozarks of Arkansas, you know, about 800 people. Never knew anyone who became a scientist. Started doing experiments in the garage. I didn't blow anything up. Um, I had some that fizzled. I built uh, a small telescope when I was in high school. 
And even though I'd never met a, a scientist or anyone with a graduate degree, it's like, that's what I want to do. I know this is going to be a fall unlike any other. People are uncertain with COVID about what it will actually be like to be here in the fall. But if you're a student, look at me and listen to me. There will be amazing things to do in person on campus this fall. Know that you're gonna be in good hands. We are committed to your health and safety, but you will be part of a community. Once you find your people, you're at home. And it doesn't matter where you are, you're part of your family and you have comfort and you have engagement and you have opportunities. And that will be here even in these circumstances. If you walk around campus, what you see is an amazing set of facilities. There are new buildings that have gone up. There's new infrastructure. When I talk to parents who come and visit on new student day, inevitably they say, it's incredibly beautiful here with the mountains. And they look around at the campus and say, it's bright, it's shiny, it's new. And I just smile and say, I know, welcome to Utah. The best part about what I do is a chance to listen to people whether it's students talking about the courses that excite them or the projects on which they're working, or talking to faculty who say, you know, I'm on the verge of a discovery. All of those things are there and you hear them every day. And not just in the sciences and engineering, but you hear them in the arts and humanities, the passion about this touches my soul these words, this painting, this music. And in any given day, I probably talk to a dozen people across a dozen different disciplines. And the one common thing is everyone is passionate about what they do. That's the community you get to be a part of if you come to the University of Utah. You wake up every day and say, wow, I can't believe I get to do this again. The distinguishing characteristic of the University of Utah is if you come here, it literally and metaphorically opens the world to you. It is an institution with an international reputation. Every major company in the world hires graduates from the University of Utah. And if you're like me and you came from a small town that no one ever heard of, you come to a place like you, you can do anything. You can go anywhere, you can work any place, and you'll be prepared to work with the best people on the planet. Thanks, Dr. Reed. His story is pretty out of this world. See what I did there? And he's right. You're about to become part of a tight community that cares, that's passionate about what they do, and who is excited to help you find your passion in life. But don't take my word for it. We have so many remarkable folks on campus who can tell you their own story. Like Julia De Silva, your new student welcome speaker, and she's super welcoming. She's an incredible student who's from Brazil. You're really gonna like this part. I grew up in Brazil. I moved to the United States for my last years of high school. I used to say that I wanted to acquire the superpower so that I could go and help other people. During my first year, um, I learned a lot about my purpose. I'm just really grateful for the people and the things that helped me I feel like I belong in the University of Utah because I suffered a lot from imposter syndrome. I always felt like I wasn't supposed to be here, I didn't belong, it wasn't good enough, and those people, those professors, those faculty members, they all helped me understand that I do belong and that my future is here. Here are three things I learned from my first year. Um, first, I learned a lot about friendship. I learned a lot about balance and how to organize myself enough so that I can have a good and successful academic life, but also have a good and successful social life. I learned a lot about networking. I met a lot of people and I met a lot of professionals in my field. Something that I realized that everyone else is going through the same thing as I am. Every other student, they also want to feel like they belong. They also want to understand themselves better and find their passions and they want to make friends and, me and make memories and they want to have experiences they will never forget. When I realized that that was true for everyone else, not just for me, it was so much easier for me to connect, connect with them because it was like, hey, we have the same interests and I can help you with this if you help me with that and uh, we can support each other on this road because if we're alone, it can be very hard. It's interesting because I found my own kind of family here, the people who supported me and just brought out the best in me. I'm so excited to have you here. 
and go Utah. My superpower. Okay, uh, actually, I want to change my superpower. <laughs> what is my superpower? <laughs> my superpower is to connect with people. Go you. Go you. <laughs> so <coughs> Julia is just an example of our excellent student body. So if you see her on campus, wave warmly to her, but make sure it's from six feet away. Time now to meet one of our esteemed faculty, Dr. Karen Paisley. She has an inspiring story for us. So hi there y'all, my name is Karen Paisley, I'm faculty in the College of Health. I have been here at the University of Utah for 20 years, which is a really, really long time. I'm so happy to have been asked to be the faculty speaker to get a chance to welcome y'all here. To do that, I want to talk a little bit about the learning framework, which I know sounds super fun, right? But it's the way that we conceptualize the exceptional educational experience here at the U. So when we think about what you're going to get from your time here, there's four things. One is knowledge and skills, which is kind of the no brainer, right? Why would you come to college and not leave a little bit smarter than when you got here? Second is community. We want you to find your people. Your people are here and we want you to find your friends. We want you to find a community that you want to contribute to and want to be a part of. We want you to be able to make an impact is the third piece of this. We want you to make a change that's meaningful and positive to you here at the university or in the Salt Lake Valley or abroad or in your major, wherever that is. We want you to be able to, to, to make an impact. And then transformation is my personal favorite. Um, and I got to tell you a little story to help you understand why. I grew up in Dayton, Tennessee, small little manufacturing town. My daddy was a college professor there at this little school. And I was taking a math class in eighth grade from a guy named Floyd Kelly. Floyd, his pants were always a little too short, little, little awkward. He always had white socks, black shoes, ate the same lunch every single day, horn rim glasses, um, looked like a, a quintessential math teacher. Hated cheerleader. Oh, I didn't even tell you I was one, so that don't help. I was a cheerleader, shocker, right? And that meant he didn't like me even more. So I went to him one afternoon and asked for help in this class. And he looked at me and said, girls can't do math. And I went home that night and was talking to my daddy and told him what he said. And my dad does one of these. He starts to tense up. He's making fists. His veins are popping out in his neck. He's got steam coming out his ears and damn. I know it's not the big curse words, right? But it was the only time I'd ever heard my dad curse and it's the only time he's cursed since. From then, I was scared of math. I ran from math in high school when all my friends were taking difficult math courses. I didn't, I hid, I took English, I took art and those are great things to do, but I was hiding. Turns out it affected my decision about my college too. I, I hid in a small little tiny school, made it for about a year and realized that wasn't gonna be a great fit and transferred to the American University in Washington, DC. So you get to DC and everything's international. I decided to major in international business, which meant I had to take a stats class. So first semester there, I walk into this room and here's this guy up at the front of the class who's got this bushy beard and these outdoor Orvis kind of fishing clothes, doesn't look like a math teacher at all and makes me laugh. He starts talking about math in a way that makes it more fun. He says, let's get to know Frank. And we go looking for a variable named Frank and how we're gonna get there. And I remember enjoying math for the first time and I'm getting an A and I'm feeling smart. And so I look for the next class this guy's taking because I just wanted to be around that energy. Turns out it was a 5,000 level stats class that I didn't need at all. I remember crying in his office on the floor because I'm trying to multiply grids of numbers, which makes no sense and I'm never gonna use it. End up with an A in his class, end up declaring a finance major, which in case y'all didn't know, there's a little bit of math involved. Graduated with a 397. Summa cum laude, this man became my first reference for every job I ever interviewed for. He got me job interviews that I didn't know were possible with the Department of Corrections in DC doing a recidivism study. Didn't know what recidivism was, didn't know it was possible until I met Michael Green. He believed in me all until I got to the point that I could believe in myself. And that's what transformation is about. And that's what we wish for you here at the U. It might not take a faculty member. Hopefully it doesn't take crying during office hours, but if it does, that's okay too. Get to know us, come see us in our office hours with or without tears. Let us be supportive. Let us help you figure out paths. Let us write letters. Let us just be involved um, in your transformation. 
So again, y'all, welcome to the University of Utah. Congratulations for selecting the University of Utah, and we hope to see you around. That was super. We're nearly done, but first, some tips to enjoy your first year of college. Make sure you label your food in the fridge, even if you live at home. Work hard, play hard, and make sure you have your mask with you at all times on campus. Speak with your professors. They are here for you and want to help you succeed. And lastly, get involved. We'll get through this, I promise. We're very excited to have you join the Utah family. So, welcome. All right, so that's it. Told you it'd be easy. Now, let's sing. <laughs> Do you know the Utah fight song? Well, you're about to. Follow the bouncing ball and don't hold back. You too, parents, family, and friends. This is a mandatory group activity. Our virtual Utah marching band is ready to lead the way, so sing along. Are we done? That it? I feel welcome. Do you feel welcome? It just doesn't go away, does it?